Okay, so first I would like to thank the organizers for the, this kind of invitation and I will try to, to move, uh, to pick your attention to the engineering we are doing um, to try to uh, evolve or to uh, generate uh, microbes, bacteria that could be used for some uh, therapeutic applications. So the, 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 our approach is, uh, let's say, uh, a modest one, uh, trying to generate m uh, modules that can be combined uh, in, let's say, a chassis that of your choice. And, um, and so it's not kind of a radical issue like complete engineering of the genome or changing the basis, etc. So we more focus on developing these particular modules. So I will concentrate today in our work that we have been doing to uh, provide uh, uh, targeting addition properties to E. coli and also to provide the expression of injectison to non-pathogenic E. coli strains. So as uh, you probably know, uh, the use of bacteria in, in medicine has been quite limited. And, and certainly most applications that you still see uh, in the market comes from the use of probiotics, natural strains that have certain properties. So they are considered natural, so they eat from yogurts or from, let's say, certain isolates from, from a patient, etc. There are certain strains that are, con that are considered beneficial and are given to certain, for certain pathologies or to protect your, enhance your immune system. And there are other major applications, which is basically the use of attenuated pathogens to induce immune responses and then uh, produce uh, vaccines, uh, or, uh, to, to induce a, as vaccines or induce a vaccination. Since uh, recombinant uh, technology appears, there was clearly an interest in the modifying bacteria to produce molecules, not only in vitro, but also in vivo, maybe uh, to uh, enhance these properties that are sometimes found in beneficial bacteria. And in fact, if you review the literature, there's quite a few examples in which the people has been using traditional recombinant engineering to, to modify probiotic strains or to modify non-pathogens or even attenuated strains of pathogens to uh, deliver certain molecules of interest, like for instance, interleukins or antibodies against inflammatory diseases some cytotoxic proteins against cancer because bacteria are able to grow in solid tumor preferentially when they are administered systemically, as you will see later. And also other molecules that could uh, intervene against infections, and viral or bacterial infections. So you could have a probiotic that could uh, protect your mucosal surfaces against this type of infection, or even uh, deliver certain molecules to cells in your, in your gut so you can pre-program the um, metabolins or some molecules produced by the epithelial cells that are in contact with these microbes. And this is our, our areas in which there's been work, uh, there's many groups that are working on developing this type of applications. So, well, a consensus, let's say, for us, it would be to have, uh, so there's, with this synthetic biology, you can generate modules modules of different types, and, and so ideally, synthetic biology can provide a way to combine all these modules in a perfect chassis, so you will not need to use a natural strain, which, which is partially beneficial, but will have also other properties that are unknown. Okay, so we could ideally think on introducing in a chassis that is uh, maybe indicated for a, a certain application, all number of modules to sense the environment and response to that, or for instance, to by delivering a protein, we can uh, also introduce modules that would allow the bacteria to move toward certain signals, so targeting the bacteria to certain uh, uh, areas, or introduce reporters that could uh, uh, indicate us that the presence of a certain molecule or, a, or the presence of a certain uh, disease, hmm? and all could be contained by certain mechanisms of, of containment. So you can introduce in your bacteria all these type of things. I would uh, talk, as I mentioned previously, on 
a module that we have developed for uh, targeting the uh, specific addition of E. coli and to silts and, and surfaces, and also later about a delivery module based on injectisomes. So why we focus first on this type of uh, modules to, to target the addition of bacteria to certain cells? Because we, we consider that this is an essential property if you want to use bacteria for therapeutic applications, is to you have the possibility to deliver your bacteria to the type of cells that you are interested in. Or maybe in some cases you will have a pathological disease and cell that is infected by a virus, so you have an antigen of a virus there. Or it can be a tumor cell and you will have certain protein express. But also, in addition to this type of application, you think that these modules could have other applications also uh, in vitro, let's say on abi abiotic surfaces, so you can maybe develop this type of additions against uh, surfaces so, so that you can uh, help your bacteria to attach to a certain surface, for instance, in a biosensor, sorry. I think it moves in the wrong direction, yeah. Okay. So, if you see what's uh, in nature, and so what happened, how the bacteria adhere to the different surfaces, is uh, they have developed a number, number usually of proteins or polymers of proteins that are uh, uh, assembled on the surface of the bacteria and that allows the bacteria to recognize certain structures on the surface. Usually, as any strain, any natural strain carries multiple additions against different, um, with different specificities. And so it's difficult to, to reprogram a natural strain um, is you do not delete partially the major additions that it contains. Another problem with natural additions also is that the specificity, uh, it is kind of broad and, and low. And this is because uh, it frequently recognizes carbohydrate. And as you have heard from uh, the previous talk, carbohydrates are frequently found in many proteins. So bacteria will have the tendency to bind to more than one tissue. And my, so this are more than one cell types with using natural addition. So you have to really engineer something new if you want to be more specific. And so we thought of uh, just uh, based on, on what is known about addition, as, as I told you, that can be anchored on the surface. We play with different uh, possibilities, but we wanted to uh, reduce this uh, to, a, let's say, two modular Part. One is a domain that will carry the addition property, and the second will be a, a domain that anchors this to uh, the surface of the bacteria. So what will be the ideal properties of this type of domains? Will be high affinity and specificity, of course, and, and additionally, that it will be something that you can select from a library. Okay? So you can later, just simply by changing this addition model, you will be able to target to different surfaces. So you will have a method of selection and a large library of this type of domains. So we thought of uh, using, why not, immunoglobulin domain? Because natural additions in bacteria frequently have Ig-like domains, like in Fimbria. This is a FIMH domain uh, of a pili, type 1 filae in E. coli, and it carries an Ig-like form. Okay, so it's possible to use uh, a human or other type of uh, antibody-like domains to replace for natural additions. And we uh, decided to use, after testing different types, this type of uh, antibody molecules that are derived from uh, camel antibodies, which carry all this specificity uh, in a single domain of the variable VH domain. These uh, antibodies are, are found in, in, in camelids. They were discovered in, in Belgium in the, by the group of Serge Mulderman uh, years ago. And uh, this has uh, very interesting properties in binding and solubility, etc. And so there are, and one thing that uh, attracted our attention also was that they are simple and you can express them very well in, in bacteria. Okay, and in terms of selection, uh, this system also allows to easily select the specificity, the specificity you want 
I just simply summarize the standard methodology that has been that is developed, but there are other alternatives. Just after immunization of an animal of this type, you generate a library of genes from the B cells, you clone them in E. coli, you can infect with bacteriophages and make a pool of bacteriophages and select the specificity of uh, the clone that is recognizing the antigen of your interest. This is a simple uh, scheme for basic technology that it was developed time years ago. So we decide to use this type of anti, uh, antibody-like molecules as addition domains, and we uh, later, of course, co-developed a way to anchor these domains on the surface of E. coli, and we tested different anchor domains. I'm going to make the story very short. We, we, the, the domain or the, the proteins that end up to be the, the, the best ones would, were derived from entero, uh, pathogenic E. coli, enterohemorrhagic E. coli strains that are called intimines. Intimines are proteins that are expressed on the surface of E. coli or these strains and allow the bacteria to attach to the surface of uh, enterocytes. It carries a barrel, a domain that anchors in the outer membrane and it displays Ig like domains toward the surface. And this is shown here. This is the, the, the outer membrane of the bacteria. Here is the hot cell. And these bacteria attach to the enterocytes using intimines which display these Ig-like domains for contacting a specific receptor that the bacteria inject into the enterocytes. So it's a protein that has a certain specificity, a clear specificity for a specific protein that is not found normally in, in the mammalian cell. So we uh, end up with this type of constructions with an outer membrane anchor domain and this antibody domain. And we started to, to express these uh, modules with plasmids, uh, standard plasmid that you can induce in a strain that lacks the major fimbria type in E. coli, so they uh, do not attach to manose residues. And uh, we found that they were correctly expressed, displayed on the surface. We introduced tags for immune detection and that they bind correctly the epitope on solution. And we also tested if they could somehow derive the, the addition of, of the bacteria to, to a surface coated by the antigen recognized by the antibody in this case. So uh, we coat ELISA plates with uh, different antigens toward which we have uh, nanobodies against them. And as you can see, if you incubate these surfaces with, with E. coli bacteria expressing uh, uh, and these additions on, on the surface, you have bacteria attached to the surface of the plastic coated with a fibrinogen or GFP. If you have addition, uh, these uh, additions uh, recognizing GFP or human fibrinogen uh, on the surface. So we decided to move from the plasmic to the chromosome to uh, avoid antibiotics and to avoid the complexity of making induction, etc. So what we did is essentially was to uh, recombine our plasmids into the chromosome, uh, substitute the uh, PTAC promoters by uh, constitutive promoters, and delete at simultaneously that we introduce other uh, uh, reporters like bioluminescence in our strain. We delete other additions that could be interfered with the addition process. <clears throat> and one thing that we tested and for us was very important was to see at the same time that we introduced the, this, this construct, we remove all antibiotics, okay? But one thing that we tested is that not only the expression of our constraint it was okay in the chromosome, but also the growth and the viability of the bacteria was perfect. So it was essentially growing at the same rate and it has the same viability than the uh, strain that doesn't carry these constructs in the chromosome. And as you see, the uh, expression of the construct is maintained throughout days of continuous culture okay, without any uh, requirement of uh, any selection pressure. So it's just growing the strains in LB. Okay, so we wanted to test this with cells. And uh, so since we had this type of uh, and certain antibodies, that uh, nanobodies against GFP and also against uh, the translocated intimine receptor, which is an antigen of this IHEC, which is not found, as I told you before, in, in HeLa cells, 
or in human cells, in any, any part of, the, of, the, of your body. So we thought this could be nice examples to test the, the addition of these strains uh, to, to our cells. So we made uh, stable transfectants of uh, HeLa cells that express on the surface the antigens recognized by the adhesins. In this case, it was GFP displayed on the surface, anchored by an transmembrane domain, and, and this is the, uh, the region of, uh, uh, of this antigen that is still recognized by, by this uh, adhesin, and it was anchored to another uh, fluorescent protein that is not cross, doesn't cross uh, recognize by, uh, cross react with the uh, nanowire against GFP. And we tested uh, initially uh, growing cells uh, in vitro, on plates, the, the transfected cells or cell that expresses GFP on, on, or tear on the surface, and we incubate these wells with our strains, the one that is a control or the one that expresses G the adhesions like GFP or tear. And uh, initially, as I told you before, we introduced this bioluminescence, so you can see all wells uh, that are producing light. So, and once you wash, to just see what are the bacteria that uh, remain on the wells after washing, you just see that only the bacteria that expresses the addition against GFP binds to HeLa cells expressing GFP on the surface, and only uh, bacteria expressing this antibody against tear binds to the well that has carries uh, HeLa cells with tear on the surface. And you take a look at what is inside you, you would uh, be able to see it uh, better. So you will have cells, this is a field in which you can see some untransfected cells and other cells that uh, are expressing the GFP. And this is a stain for E. coli, and as you see, E. coli binds to cells that expresses the, the GFP on the surface. And the control strain that recognizes a different antigen will not bind to these cells. And a nice control is these non-untransfected non -transfected cells that, as you see, are clean of, uh, of bacteria. This is uh, more or less the same, but uh, with confocal microscopy, selecting a field in which you have a transfected and non-transfected cells, and, and you can clearly see the number of bacteria surrounding your, your target cell. Mm -hmm. And the same happened uh, in the case of the other adhesin against tear, you have a, a cell that is expressing tear, it's fully covered with bacteria. So another important thing is uh, the speed at how this happens. And we make a video to see con uh, how in, in, time, in a time frame of less than three minutes uh, of infection, you have a, here a cell that is non-transfected and the bacteria go at scan a little bit the surface and then escapes. And whereas in cells in which uh, there are expression of the target, bacteria go and attaches to, to the surface and stop moving. And, and this is something that occurs, as you see, in less than three minutes. So it's very fast. We wanted to test this a little bit in vivo. And uh, we... Uh, as you probably know, bacteria, especially anaerobic bacteria, has been used um, since uh, more than a, a, a century ago to uh, try to uh, eliminate tumors because certain bacteria, specifically anaerobic, can grow in uh, certain anoxic areas in solid tumors. And uh, this is work that was initiated more than 100 years ago. But as, as, I, as I said, there's been a group like Neil Forbes uh, from, from Michigan who uh, are engineering salmonella strains and others to uh, be able to deliver specifically un, uh, molecules of interest in the tumor. One issue with this type of, of uh, uh, let's say, experimental approach against cancer is the dose that is safe to be administered. Of course, you need a bacteria that is not pathogenic, but also you need a low dose to avoid a systemic infection. But at the same time, the dose has to be high enough so that you guarantee the colonization of a tumor by, by the bacteria. So we decided to test whether the expression of these uh, uh, glues, this adhesin on the surface of the bacteria, helps the colonization of the tumor. 
And so we established with ourselves uh, a model, experimental model, based on HeLa cell expressing GFP. So you can, you, uh, by subcutaneous injection, you uh, nude mice, you can generate a solid tumor in the flank of the mice. And later, you can in, uh, introduce your bacteria by systemic infection in the tail vein of the animal. And it is reported that in this type of uh, approaches with bacteria uh, colonizing tumors, three to five days after injection, there's a peak of the proliferation of bacteria in the tumors, whereas other organs usually less, have less, less uh, uh, number of bacteria, as you will see. And so we uh, decided to, to test whether our bacteria were able to colonize these mm, tumors with expressing this GFP, and it would be a better targeting of our uh, strains. And initially, we just simply used the dose that is reported by the people that is using Salmonella or even E. coli K12 to access a tumor, a solid tumor that is in the range of 10 to the 7. And as you see, both are strain that is targeting the tumor that expresses GFP and the strain that is a control. Uh, colonized it equally well. Six out of six animals were, uh, the tumors of these animals were uh, colonized uh, efficiently and with uh, having a bacterial proliferation to, toward 10 to the power of 8 per gram of tissue of tumor. Whereas other organs like liver and spleen were almost clean of, of bacteria. Okay. So that means that at a high dose, there's no difference. So we wanted to test what happened if we reduce the dose, okay? If we really uh, force a condition that is not optimal for the bacteria to colonize those tumors. And so we reduced the dose to 1% of the standard dose using 10 to the 5. And as you see from this slide, now then there's a significant difference between the strain that carries an adhesin that targets the tumor in which in these animals eight out of nine uh, animals were colonized, the tumors of these animals were colonized by the bacteria efficiently, whereas in the controls, only two out of nine or three out of nine using the wild type strain that carries non-specific adhesins, natural strain, uh, were colonized. So this engineered strain significantly enhance the colonization at lower doses. So you, will, you are able to target more efficiently uh, bacteria using a, a lower dose to, to a tumor. And this is a control of a specificity. We introduce a group in which uh, the tumor were uh, generated by HeLa cells that were not expressing GFP, and in this case, our strain was not able to uh, colonize this tumor more efficiently. It was like in the control, identical to the control. So uh, to conclude a little bit this part of the talk, I, I, I'm show you uh, these uh, constructs, this uh, addition that can be expressed constitutively from the chromosome of the bacteria and that can allow you to uh, target specific cells or surfaces or tumors in vivo. Okay? And uh, I, we believe this, uh, we are developing additions that will target real tumors with uh, specific markers and that in areas in which bacteria may, may access and may deliver a specific uh, molecules toward the tumor cell or in the tumor environment. So I then will focus on one of these put it, <coughs> delivery machines, machineries. And uh, as you probably know, bacteria had evolved a number of uh, protein secretion systems, especially gram-negative bacteria, to uh, translocate proteins across the inner and outer membrane. And one of these, some of them are simple, but many are, some of others are extraordinarily complex and allow uh, direct translocation from the bacteria to another cell. And this another cell, in, in for this particular type of uh, protein delivery systems, usually is a eukaryotic cell uh, or a mammalian cell, plant cell. And so many pathogens from uh, especially gram-negative strains from Pseudomonas or from E. coli, Salmonella, carries complex machineries that are called injectisomes for the type 3 secretion system that allows the translocation of a specific proteins toward the uh, cytosol of the infected cell. And this 
effector protein that are translocated by this machinery are, can make uh, multiple functions in the host cell, but helps the infection to proceed. They can target uh, cell cycle, they can target inflammation, they can target the cytoskeleton and mitochondria, so they have multiple possibilities to, to target. And usually these machineries are coupled to a dedicated ATPase that energizes the system for, for translocation. They carry also uh, defectors that are translocated, carries a short end terminal sequence that is not cliff, but is recognized by the machinery to be translocated toward the cytosol of a mammalian cell. So in a way, this is like a syringe, a molecular syringe for translocation of proteins, and there's clearly a, a, um, an interest in using this type of devices to toward a specific delivery of molecules in the cytos of, of, of mammalian cells. So we uh, decided to, to, to try to assemble uh, this type of injectisome um, based on the uh, injectisome that are expressed by enteropathogenic E. coli strains, which, as I mentioned previously, help the um, bacteria, these uh, pathogenic strains, to attach to the enterocytes. So they are syringe-like uh, complexes, that, as I showed you before, but the significant difference of this type of injectison is that the, it extends a filament, a very long filament that can be uh, up to almost a micron long, to access the enterocyte even from a distance. So he can inject proteins, not even uh, with a close contact. He can inject protein initially from, from a distance. And then it introduces, for instance, this translocated intimin receptor, and then it binds intimately to uh, the enterocyte later. Okay? So these uh, filaments have a channel in which the proteins are supposed to be uh, translocated through this pore of, the, of this uh, molecule. So this is a, a scheme of how IPEC uh, attaches and in, injects the translocated intimin receptor and form this uh, attaching and effacing lesion at this particular uh, interaction, which in, the, in this particular case, uh, the tear is also able to signal, in, to signal and to uh, <coughs> reorganize actin on uh, the surface of, of the enterocyte, and so the bacteria will be, uh, uh, let's say, sit on a pedestal of actin. So it's something that is very uh, easily seen, is that the bacteria remains extracellular, but the actin uh, polymerizes just underneath the bacteria, having a, like a pedestal-like structure. Bacteria not only introduce tear, it introduces, as I mentioned previously, many other effectors that has other functions, this type of bacteria. But as, so initially our interest was with antibodies, but um, because as you know, antibody molecules are usually targeting uh, the cellular receptor or soluble antigens, just simply because they are accessible. But there are many other targets inside the cell which are important and which are difficult to access using an antibody uh, strategy. So we decided to, so we thought that since E. coli can be used for uh, selection of antibody molecules, why not use the same strain also for delivery? But uh, as I said, uh, the, the, uh, this type of injectisome could deliver many other proteins of, of interest, not only uh, the effectors. So we did some, <coughs> some work with the uh, pathogenic strain just to test that the syringes uh, were capable of uh, translocating um, small antibody fragments like the nanobodies that I mentioned previously. And as you see, we tag the nanobodies with a sequence that is recognized by the, by, from a natural effector, and we could see the secretion in this case toward the medium, specific dependent on, on the type 3 uh, system of the antibodies uh, fragments. And we made uh, different experiments to show that they were active, they were binding the, uh, the antigen uh, uh, with similar affinity. 
and these are just simply uh, mutants in which you knock out the uh, ATP, ATPase and then without this ATPase uh, activity you don't see any secretion of the uh, molecule or other proteins that are forming this filament and the pore. And we also test that these uh, antibody molecules could be, with this system, could be injected into mammalian cells, not only secreted with the, with the system. We did different experiments, maybe the more visual is this one, in which you use a reporter that is an enzyme, beralactamase, that can degrade a substrate, a fluorescent substrate in, in the infected cells. So this, what you see here, are infected HeLa cells that are, uh, you don't see the bacteria, but you see, I simply see the HeLa cells. And if the, the beta lactamase is inside the cytosol of the cell, then the, this substrate of, that is green and of, of the beta lactamase turns blue because of the enzymatic activity of, of the beta lactamase. And so we uh, use this uh, assay to test whether we could translocate also the nanobodies, and we test several of them, and we also see uh, tr translocation of uh, fusion between the nanobodies and the enzyme inside the, the HeLa cell. So we, it, was clear, it was clear that there was a potential to translocate heterologous proteins uh, using uh, the injectisomes of EPEC, but the problem was that EPEC is a pathogen, so you are not going to use a pathogen at all for introducing anything, especially because, as I told you, EPEC not only introduces the protein that you are interested in, it introduces over 26 uh, effectors, other eff proteins that you are not interested uh, on. So we decided that the best way to go would be to um, move the injectisomes to a non-pathogenic strain and see if we could assemble these uh, complexes, the uh, complex delivery, into a uh, K12 strain generating something that we call a synthetic injector E. coli strain, okay, CEC. Just to continue with this EPEC, EHEC, uh, CEC strain, the, the, the nomenclature that they, they, they saw there. So, um, how we uh, introduced this into K12 was, so how we envisioned the introduction was not easy. It was previously reported that you can clone the whole island into a cosmic, and then you could see some uh, assembly of, of the Thai 3, but it was very weak, and, and partially because the regulation is not maintained. And uh, so the, the loci that uh, encodes all the structural proteins of this injectisome is located in a region of about 35 kilobases, that is called the uh, locus of enterocyte effacement. And it, it, is, it carries the structural genes required for the assembly of this machinery, but it also carries other genes that m might not be, they are not interested for, for synthetic approach, like regulators or the F sun effectors that are uh, being uh, injected and that you don't want to have there. So we decided to pick from this loci only the genes that were required for translocation. And since we wanted to have a good expression and a controllable expression, we decided also to remove the promoters from the, our constructs. And so we, what we decided was to remove the regulators and remove the, the effectors and promoter regions. And so we just decided to amplify the genes that were uh, coding uh, essential genes to assemble the injectison in a functional way. So we amplify these engineer operons okay, without any, uh, as you say, only the all open reading frames with no promoters, no regulators, and no effectors. And we introduce these uh, frames of uh, fragments into vectors that carry um, PTAC promoter to induce the system by addition of IPTG initially. And as uh, we are not, uh, we don't want to, to, to work with plasmid or antibiotic resistance, as I mentioned previously, so we decided to integrate all our constructs in the chromosome at different positions. And in fact, what we did was to integrate them in replacing natural additions found in bacteria. So our strain was 
uh, further deleted of uh, natural addition factor and uh, during the process of integration. So we integrate these five operons in the chromosome, replacing these uh, cryptic additions found in K12. And uh, we uh, indeed generate an, uh, a different strain, an additional strain that uh, lacks the promoter in the first operon of the system so that we could have a control of the expression of uh, a control of the specificity of the translocation of uh, any protein that we, we want. So uh, this is a, an experiment that, uh, in which you can see growing the strain and comparing with the production of these injectisomes in EPEC. You compare it with the production in the engineer strain by ad with addition of IPDG. And these are proteins, this ESPD, B, and A are proteins of the filament that are in, in fact translocated through the injectisome and form this filament to help to recognize the mammalian cell and then form a pore for protein translocation. So once you see this protein is that the type 3 system is active and as you see the three proteins B, D and A are also found specifically when we induce in the supernatants of the, uh, our engineered strain and you can recognize them by specific antibodies. <coughs> so we uh, detect by Western blood different components, but we decided to go a step further and try to purify the injectisomes uh, of our engineer strain and compare with what we could purify from enteropathogenic strain. And as you see, we could detect filamentous structures of different lengths <coughs> that are uh, compatible with the antibody and that are cross uh, recognized by antibodies uh, against this injectisome uh, from EPEC and from our uh, engineer strain which are uh, very similar in, uh, they look very similar. And so our strain is probably assembling bona fide uh, injectisome of EPEC. So we tested by different methods, uh, how can we, uh, if our strain is able to translocate proteins into mammalian cells, acting really as a syringe, and uh, since I previously mentioned the, the, the one that is more easy to test probably is the tear uh, effector. Why? Because one is the first protein that is translocated naturally by the pathogen. It inserts in the membrane and then it polymerizes actin. So there's a simple readout to detect if there's been translocation of this protein by the type 3 is that the actin polymerizes underneath the bacteria. <coughs> So we decided to, to test whether our strain was able to uh, translocate tear. And for that, we uh, introduced tear with his, a specific chaperone that is required for its secretion and also intimin now on the surface of the bacteria using amplifying this uh, fragment of the Li. So we will have a strain that in addition to exp of expressing all the components of the injectisome will carry this uh, from the chromosome, carries the, the effector protein and the intimin for a specific uh, recognition of, of tear. And this is a confocal image in which we compare the pathogen, the EPEC strain, in which I don't know if you are able to see something, but the bacteria are stained in both cases with this cyan color. So it's what, uh, well, what you see here are cells infected that do almost, it's difficult to see the actin because it's a stain in red and it's hard to see. But then you have to believe me that the bacteria, this, in this case is EPEC, there's a small accumulation of actin underneath the bacteria. Okay, this is a strain that lacks the, uh, the uh, ATPase. So in this particular strain, you will see bacteria attached but there's no actin accumulation, there's no red spots underneath. And these are the engineer strain in which you see the bacteria in, in cyan, and then all this red is the polymerization of actin underneath the, the bacteria. So meaning that our, our engineer strain was capable of translocating this protein and uh, into the mammalian cell in a functional form. So it was able to to, to signal actin polymerization. 
and this is the specific control in which without the promoter you don't see any uh, even bacteria attached to the cells in this particular case. So this summarizes, I don't know what happened with this, like uh, not so intense. So uh, yeah, no, now you can see better, huh? Yeah, I don't know what, it was like a tire of <laughs> projecting things. So you, well, then you can see the image. Here. So this is a summary of what we, we have now, but we are working on systems that may, uh, allowed us to induce the system by not IPTG, but other uh, inducers that can be used in vivo. Uh, but essentially, the, the, the strain, it is um, in a way in which we, you can assemble these uh, specific uh, in injectisomes on the surface, and then you can produce the protein of interest in a different position, and then this protein will be injected into the mammalian cell. And so what could be the application of this, uh, especially if we combine it with the targeting that I mentioned previously. So we could deliver proteins specifically to specific cells. And not only antibody fragments, we can also think on natural effectors found in, in these pathogens. This pathogen has like a catalog of proteins that trigger different pathways. So you can uh, choose something that acts on for cell killing or for uh, uh, in, infl in inflammation, for instance. And, and so you can target particular pathways using this uh, delivery of uh, protein delivery uh, in, in the cytosol of, of bacteria. And of course, you can introduce other type of things like enzyme or uh, peptides for immunizations, or why not transcription factor has been shown that certain transcription factor can be translocated through this system and can modify the genome also of the, of the cell. So I think there's uh, say an opportunity to, to, to do a real application with this type of, of bacterial engineering. So I would like to, although you have been seeing the people that has been involved in my presentation, I would like to thank uh, especially Carlos for uh, his work in and synthetic additions, Valencio has developed this system also for selection. So we can select against different targets, uh, uh, the additions and the nanobodies that are of, of our interest using directly the bacterial display system. And David was mainly responsible of the engineering in the, of the TIE 3 in, in K12. And I would uh, like also to, to thank uh, a friend, uh, Professor Gat Frankel from Imperial College, who is an expert in IPEC, IHEC, etc., and who introduced me to all this world uh, initially, and to Victor, of course, who has been my, let's say, mentor in the past, and who is still inspiring many ideas in, in our group. And so, thank you for your attention, and 